Jackson U. Those have your Bibles will like to join in uh, along with us today. I want to apologize. We're not going to be able to get the words up on the screen uh, today. We'll try to have those back uh, next week. We're having some technical problems with the computer. Not anything serious, just some of the settings has got off, and we'll try to hopefully get that back up uh, next week. All right, in Psalms chapter number 30, verse number 1. Psalms 30 and verse number 1. I want to read some things in the Word of God, and I'm going to be talking about leaving our past behind and leaving some of the disappointments and the discouragements behind us and pressing forward. I know that we're in the Christmas season, and those listening by radio and watching by television, most likely when this comes out, this is going to come out uh, probably on the Sunday, maybe right before Christmas or whatever on TV, and uh, you'll be hearing people preach about Christmas all across. America except for me and I'm going to be preaching some things the Lord's laid on my heart not that I got anything against Christmas I love Christmas but uh, this is what the Lord has laid on my heart I want to follow him not tradition Amen. And and sometimes I preach on Christmas during Christmas. And I will be preaching about Christmas on uh, Wednesday night, December the 23rd. We're going to have a special Christmas service. I got a video I'm going to be showing that I, I hadn't even told anybody about. My wife don't even know about it yet. Uh, that's that's moving. Uh, that will really bless you. Uh, and and we've got to get our equipment going before then. But <laughs> But we will, praise the Lord. But anyway, we're going to have a great time and a special service. But today, there's some things. I feel there's an urgency in my spirit to try to encourage people to go back and to look at the Lord again and to remember He loves you. Things may be hard in your life right now. You may be facing some challenges, uh, maybe with automobile or with uh, a bill that you can't pay. Or maybe there's a sickness that you've got that the devil has afflicted your body with sickness or with pain that you're having to deal with. I want to refresh your memory and hope that I can cause you to remember um, the, the that the Lord loves you and he wants you to not focus on what's going on right now. Don't remember the former things, but let's look forward to the new things uh, that today has brought. Tomorrow is behind us. It don't matter how hard I try to go back into yesterday. I don't have the ability. Yesterday is gone forever and ever and ever and ever. I can uh, I can kind of replicate a few things maybe that happened yesterday again today. But every day in its, it has a significance. Every day is a little bit different. Uh, and every person is a little bit different. Uh, and every challenge uh, that you go through is a little bit different. Uh, amen. And every church uh, is a little bit different. Uh, and every time, amen, that you get discouraged, uh, it's a little different. But Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We have the hope, amen, in Christ Jesus uh, that he's going to supply every need that we have according to his riches and glory. Amen. He will be there for us. He will help us. Amen. And if the things that you're wanting changed does not change in the time period that you think it has to be changed, the Lord will give you strength to endure this thing. Amen. Until the change comes. And that's what we need to always remember. If God has not moved yet, he will. But he's doing things uh, when we don't even realize he's doing those things, setting up things uh, for our future. I remember a year ago uh, that there was a lot of things uh, that's completely different than it is right now. I could sit here right now and, 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 and tell you numerable things that is completely different than it was one year ago, and I had no idea that the Lord would turn some things around, amen, the way that he has in the last year. There's been some terrible things 
happened in the last year. But there's been some wonderful things that's happened in the last year. But Jesus is exactly the same. He's never failed to bless me. He's never failed to be with me. He's never failed me in any area. Amen. But every day there's something that is different, a new challenge. Amen. And here's an old saying I heard a long time ago, and I've, I've used this myself. New levels brings new devils. And everybody wants a new level. Everybody says, I want to get closer to God. Uh-huh. That's good. I want to get closer to God too. But it's going to cause the enemy to attack you. Worse than he did before. Well, I don't want any more of God then. That's not what I'm trying to tell you. Amen. We need all of God that we can. But the devil is going to do all he can to block you. But when the Lord gives you a different level, there's going to be a different devil, but you're going to be able to knock him out just like he did the others. Amen. Well, I'm going to read some things in the Word of God. Amen. Hopefully we'll be encouraging you. I first want to read from the writing from the psalmist David. Then I'm going to read some things uh, that Isaiah had to say. And then I want to go into Peter's writing in 1 Peter and read some things there of encouragement, uh, how that we can build our faith, we can establish our faith uh, in Christ Jesus uh, because of what the old Men of God faced uh, and how that they left record uh, that the Lord did not leave them nor forsake them, but he was always there to help them through trials and tests. And I said some things uh, before that we invited the TV and radio crowd in when we was having prayer this morning. And uh, this is thing I wanna, one thing I want to go back over again. There's a lot of people that are facing discouragement because they've lost a loved one, maybe since last Christmas. And your first Christmas without mom or dad or grandpa and grandma or husband or wife or, or, or brother, or sister, or child, or, or, or friend, or, or someone that you really love, uh, that first Christmas without them is completely different. Uh, and sometimes it's easy to get discouraged. Uh, there's a lot of times people get down, amen, because of this. But I want to give you encouragement, and I want to build your hope, uh, amen, and I want to help you, amen, get over this, uh, amen, by, by looking back into the Word of God and taking amen what the word says uh, amen and the advice and the praise that came out of hurting people that really knew what it's like to have pain but yet they never turn loose the hand of God and I heard a testimony from somebody or not personally from this person but through someone else this week uh, how their life is a wreck. They've uh, thrown uh, every bit of their talent away. They, they have just made their life a wreck. Uh, they look awful. They sound awful. Amen. They've turned their back on God. They've got out of church, uh, and they're miserable because they had a problem arise. Instead of holding on to God, they turned against God and blamed him, amen, for the hurt uh, that was in their life. Listen, folks. God does not bring hurt. I want you to underline that. Put it in parentheses. Uh, take a highlighter and highlight that wherever you're going to write that down. Maybe you need to put that on your refrigerator. The pain that you're going through was not brought to you by God. It was brought uh, by none other than Mr. Satan a slew foot, Lucifer, the devil himself. Amen. He was the very one that's brought the pain in your life. And he wants to turn around and cause us, amen, to give up on God and to blame God, amen, for what you are going through. Amen. I don't know how many people has got depressed and the devil convinced them that the Lord took your mother away from you. Listen, folks, uh, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and after death is the judgment. If the Lord did not take your mother or my mother or whoever, then he would have to dig up every person, uh, amen, that's ever died all the way back to Adam and Eve uh, and let them live forever. Amen. They died uh, 
your parents are going to have to die. Amen. Your loved ones are going to have to die. We are going to have to die. But we've got the promise of getting to see them again one day after a while on the other side of death's chilly waters. Amen. In a beautiful place called heaven. Amen. But it's not unfair for our family members to leave us. It's not God's fault. You know what brought death to the world? Sin brought death to the world. You know who brought sin to the world? Satan brought sin to the world and his wickedness and lies and deceit. Now you can blame anybody you want to. Amen. But when the book stops, it's going to bounce right back in the devil's face. All of this was brought to you by Satan. Years ago, uh, the, some of the TV programs, they don't do it now, but some of the TV programs that you saw when television first come around, when I was a little boy, amen, and it hadn't been around but just a few years, or it wasn't in our area uh, where that I was, we didn't have one. Uh, to, but anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. Some of the old TV programs, they get to the end of the TV program, and they'll say, this was brought to you by Kellogg's Corn Flakes, or this was brought to you by 20 Mule Team Borax. I don't even remember that. Death Valley days, it used to come on. Amen. The pain that you're going through is brought to you by that lying, two-faced, hypocrite, Satan. Amen. That's who brought you the pain and the misery and caused you to believe him and caused you to go against God. Amen. And that's exactly why you're in the shape that you're in today. Don't you get mad at God. You turn around and get mad at the devil and tell him, I'm going to get as far away from you as I can. I'm going to rush into the arms of Jesus and I'm going to flood amen by his feet with my tears of sorrow and ask him to come into my heart and to help me get through this thing that I'm facing. Uh, there's somebody watching me right now. Amen. You're getting ready to face some jail time. Amen. And you're dreading it. Uh, you're dreading it worse than anything you've ever dreaded in your life. Uh, it wasn't the judge's fault uh, that you're going to jail. Uh, it wasn't the sheriff's fault uh, that arrested you that you're going to jail. Uh, it's not uh, anybody's fault but the devil's fault. Uh, and he lied to you and tricked you and caused you to do what you done. Uh, it's his fault. Uh, amen. Though he's the one that brought you the pain but Jesus wants to give you help and peace and he wants to give you gain amen and take away the pain and the old prophets of old amen that stood steadfast they were unmovable they were unchangeable and they held on amen to the faith they had in God amen when they were drugged through hard times amen when they were oppressed by the enemy they held on to their faith they did not waver amen they did not back up back up they knew who it was that was going to help them through this situation and they depended 100% on God and the testimony, amen, that they had and the witness that they had. Now every one of us uh, says, Lord, help me to have a good testimony. You got to first have a test uh, before you have a testimony, amen. We want to have the testimony that will cause people's hearts to ring, uh, but we don't want the test uh, that we have to go through with, uh, amen. Pain comes from Satan uh, and the devil done it to you. It was not God. It was not mom and dad. It was not uh, anybody else, uh, amen, except the devil lying to you and lying to me. Amen. He's the one that got me in the position I got in before that I got saved. Uh, if you're out of the will of God and you're miserable today, it's the devil that done it. Uh, amen. Look over to somebody beside you this morning and say, it was the devil that done that to me. Amen. Absolutely. And if he gets a chance, he'll do it to you again. Amen. But I'm thankful we've got redemption uh, through the blood of Jesus. Uh, the healing for our body is by his stripes we are healed. Uh, it's through his blood uh, and the sacrifice uh, on the cross of Calvary was the reason why that we're having Christmas. Uh, that's the reason why that Jesus came in the form of a baby in the first place. Uh, it wasn't so that we can have Santa Claus a few years later. It wasn't because uh, he wanted everybody to have a Christmas tree and a Christmas parade uh, and everybody Everybody sang jingle bells and grandma got run over by a reindeer. 
Amen. But he came and he and as a form of a baby so that he could live, teach, and then die on the cross. Three days later, resurrect so the world could have hope and they would know there's a God that loves them and in the midst of pain, they've got someone they can cry out to in the darkest hour of their night, in the darkest hour shadow that's in their life in the worst position that they've ever been in in their life there is hope through Jesus any of y'all ever been tried and tested? Any of y'all ever had the devil, amen, try to get in your head? Uh, did you have so many thoughts uh, that they was running over top of each other? Amen, the thoughts was they was bumping in. They was having head-on collisions. Uh, the thoughts was uh, in your head and the devil trying to distract, uh, amen, and cause you, uh, amen, to fail God uh, and to cause you to do something uh, that you'll be forever sorry that you made that decision. Uh, and you know better before you do it uh, and you have to fight and to argue with the devil and tell him I'm not going to do that. I don't have to do that. Get away from me in the name of Jesus. Amen. There was a person one day that I was talking to and they did not have any faith. They were agnostic and they didn't believe in God at all. And there was a Christian lady that they were working for. And this is what they said about this Christian lady. And I tried to explain this to this person. They said, I believe she's nuts. I believe my boss is nuts. I believe she's lost her mind. I've seen her talking to herself the other day. I said, oh. I thought most every boss has to talk to herself to be able to handle the stress. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, I said, well, what was she saying? She was saying, shut up, devil. I don't have to listen to that, and I ain't going to do it. See, to him, he thought that she's wacko. She's lost in her mind. But you know what? I'm going to, if I had a hat, I'd tip my hat to the lady. Amen? Because I'd rather her just speak out to him and put him in his place uh, as to knuckle under, draw up in a corner, feel sorry for yourself, uh, be embarrassed, uh, amen, to confront the enemy, amen, and allow him to take hold of your life uh, and to doom your soul to hell. I'd rather be talked about, amen, for talking to myself. Uh, amen? She wasn't talking to herself. She was speaking out to the devil. Of course, he didn't realize that because he was under complete, complete, surrender to Satan and he didn't understand uh, amen anybody that was having spiritual warfare and if y'all ain't never had a fight with the devil you need to be introduced to Jesus and get saved uh, then you'll be able to understand what it's like uh, amen when the devil amen is fighting you I don't want to get into all this stuff before I read the scripture, but there's a lot of people that are facing spiritual warfare. I had to talk to somebody and counsel with them. Uh, one of my church members this week uh, on the telephone, uh, amen, because of a hard battle that they're having. And I'm not going to say who it is or, or anything about the situation. I don't want to embarrass them. But some of the things, uh, amen, they were seeing in front of them, uh, it wasn't the devil, it was the Lord uh, giving them a vision, uh, amen, to show what the devil was up to and what the devil was doing so they'd be able to pray against it. Aren't you glad we've got a God, uh, amen, that can show us things, uh, amen, that can give us warnings uh, and can help us. Amen? Amen. I know some of you are saying, well, Brother Jimmy, I ain't never seen me nothing yet. Well, Amen. Hang on. You get close to the Lord. God will give you warnings. I've had dreams. I've had visions. I've heard the Lord speak to my spirit. I've heard him speak to my heart. I've heard him speak to my mind. And about three or four times in the last 50 plus years, I've heard an audible voice. I know you're saying, Brother Jimmy, I'm going to flip this over if I'm watching on television on Bugs Bunny now because I'm done lost you when you said you heard an audible voice. God doesn't speak. Where you been? Amen. He speaks to those uh, that are his. Uh, I know you're thinking, Brother Jimmy, we got another nutcase that needs to go uh, to a sanitarium somewhere uh, and be put away because you're hearing voices. Uh, I'm not hearing voices in my head. I just heard a sweet voice. Uh, amen. Three, four times. Uh, amen. And when he spoke, it was sweet. Uh, it wasn't nothing to run from. It wasn't nothing to, uh, to be scared of. Uh, it was something that sounded good. It felt good. Uh, it was good. Uh, amen. Because when God, uh, amen, speaks, speaks uh, joy and peace, uh, amen, into your life. I'm telling you what, it's something to shout over. 
Amen. And what we need is more encounters with God. Amen. We don't need any more encounters with religion. We don't need more encounters, amen, with the flesh and with people. Amen. We need more moves of the power of God within the church, and we need more moves of God at home. And when the devil goes to messing with me, I know what I need to do. It's time to go to the prayer closet. It's time to get away and start praising the Lord for the blood that was shed at Calvary. Amen. It's time to worship him. Amen. For the sacrifice that was gave and to be thankful for the little baby. Amen. They came in the city. Amen. Of David. Amen. And in a little manger. Amen. And later on. Amen. He was going to teach the world and then die for the world's sins. Amen. Resurrect three days later and give an opportunity for whosoever will let him come amen and call on the name of the Lord and he shall be saved man what a glorious Christmas what a glorious time we need to leave our past behind we need to drop the pain that we're in right now today amen and we need to recognize the Lord let me say this for I read the scripture I'm going to get it in there amen I just ain't got around to it yet amen we was reading in early service this morning out of the word of God out of St. Luke's gospel how that on the road to a Emmaus. Amen. Jesus was walking after that he was crucified, after that he resurrected from the grave. Amen. And his disciples was walking and they were so sad. Amen. As they was headed to Emmaus. And Jesus walked up right among them and they didn't even realize that it was him. And he said, why are y'all so sad? And they said, have you not heard? Where have you been? Are you a stranger that you don't know what's happened in the last three days here in the city? Why they was the best prophet uh, that ever was around. Uh, amen. He was a great with God uh, and with the people uh, and we thought he was our Messiah. He was our deliverer and they crucified him uh, and this is the third day after they put him to death. Jesus began to uh, to speak to them and started, uh, amen, in the book of Moses uh, and began to expound uh, about everything about himself. It got close to the end of the day. It was time for everybody to go in to eat uh, and to get ready to rest uh, and sleep, uh, amen. And they asked him uh, as he decided to walk off and leave them or they thought he was going to, said, would you tarry with us? So he decided to go in to tarry with them. And when he sat down, uh, he broke bread. Uh, and when he broke the bread, uh, their eyes were opened uh, and they realized it was Jesus uh, and immediately he vanished away from their sight. Aren't you glad that we've got a Savior today that loves us? He can appear and vanish away anytime he wants to. He can speak to your heart. He can give you comfort when you're in your bedroom, bathroom, living room, automobile, out behind the corn crib or wherever it is. Amen. That you get along with God and his presence of love. Amen. And joy and peace will surround you. And you can go into the closet depressed and come out shouting, Amen, I'm a millionaire. Amen, because my father owns a cattle of a thousand hills. Only God has the ability to give that to us. I'm going to read some things. Amen. We're the old men of God. Amen. The old prophets of old. Amen. Have been through hard times, difficult times, and the Lord's seen them through. Psalms 30 verse 1 says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. I'm going to stop there for just a minute. Amen. Healed him in his spirit. Any of y'all ever had a broken and a crushed spirit? Amen. The Lord's healed my body many times, but he's healed my spirit, and he's healed my broken heart innumerable times. Amen. In the last 30 plus years. O oh Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. You mean that the Lord resurrected David from the dead? No. How did he bring him from the grave? Amen. When you get so depressed that you don't have anything else to live for, it's like you're a zombie walking around in depression and discouragement, and you can feel alone in a room full of people. 
He came from the grave. He brought him from the lowest part, amen, that he could possibly be and still breathe. Amen. He brought him up from that. That's why he was praising him. That you couldn't get any lower. What he was trying to say, you can't get any lower than what I've already been. And he brought me up from the grave. I'm going to tell you, that just preaches a lot of depth to me. Amen. How that the Lord uh, is able to lift us uh, in, 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 the, in the midst of the hardest battle that you ever been through. Some of y'all going through hard times right now. You got family members that have been told that they're going to die. You've got bills that you can't pay. There's things uh, that are not right. The fear of ISIS uh, and the fear of having politicians that, that, that their brain has been removed. Amen, that's in leadership in the White House. Uh, it's unnerving, uh, amen, how that Satan uh, has took over the minds. Uh, amen, the Lord said in the last days he had sent strong delusions. Uh, he has, and it hit, amen, Pennsylvania Avenue uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, amen, like a bomb, and it run all across, uh, amen, the whole area of government. Uh, amen, it's happening here in Kentucky and other places, too, in the capitals. I hope you get that. Amen. He said, I went down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, all ye saints of his. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. So everything, amen, that happens, remember how holy our God is. Let's give remembrance and thanks and remembrance to his holiness. Amen. It may look like that everybody around you is not doing what they ought to do, but let's remember, amen, how holy our Savior is today. Amen, how pure and how that he went like a dumb lamb to the slaughter and he opened not his mouth. They tried to find fault in him, but they could not find a sin of any kind in his life. Amen, he was a spotless lamb given for sacrifice. Praise his name. Verse number five. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. He done this in his prosperity. Amen. David, amen, had sinned and done wrong, and he found grace and mercy and forgiveness. He got it the most depressed hour when he lost his son. Amen. And he had to just get up, wash his face, wash his hands, go and eat. Amen. His servants was afraid he was going to wind up dying because he had mourned. And he finally decided, I can't bring my child back but I can go to where he is. Amen. He had been down to the worst place, amen, that life could have ever brought him, and the Lord had brought him out. He was saying his anger endureth but a moment. Amen. The Lord may got mad at him, and the Lord may have punished him, but his punishment was a short time. Amen. See, when we cry out to the Lord and say, oh, God, I'm sorry for my sins, he is compassionate, and he will immediately forgive us. Of our sins. I don't know about you, but that really sparks, uh, amen, a fire in my spirit, uh, amen, and encourages me that if I make him angry, he's going to forgive me when I cry out to him. Uh, he said his, his favor is life, uh, amen. So that means uh, uh, his favor means he's allowing me to live. Uh, everything I go through with, uh, the Lord has allowed me to live. Well, Brother Jimmy, I got kids that's doing things that's not wrong. I'm with you. I, I, I'm facing things uh, that I don't understand. They're the way that they are. I'm with you. Uh, and I know that I've faced obstacles uh, that I can't seem to get over by myself. I'm with you. I understand what you're going through. I'm right there with you. But I'm also right there with David. Uh, amen. As it says, uh, amen, that in his favor is life. Uh, amen. No matter what it is that's happened, uh, I've had the joy of the Lord. Uh, amen. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, amen. I'm glad that he's there with me. He's there to help me. He's there to help you. Uh, he'll be with us always, even unto the end of the world. Uh, amen. He said that weeping may endure for the night, uh, but joy comes in the morning. Uh, he wasn't going to allow, amen, the things that was around him, amen, to pop his bubble. 
Amen. He knew no matter how bad it gets, uh, the Lord's brought me through things. Uh, amen. No matter how hard it is, uh, I know I've got the Lord that loves me and he's on my side. I'm going to move on as fast as I can. Isaiah 12 verse 1 says, In that day thou shalt say, this is Isaiah, In that day thou shalt say, O Lord, uh, I will praise thee. Thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. He did not say Allah. He said Jehovah. Amen. Well, Brother Jimmy, I worship Jehovah, uh, Allah. Then you are worshiping, amen, a false god. Jehovah, amen, is our God, and his son is Jesus, uh, the Messiah. Amen. Well, Brother Jimmy, that's not my religion. Uh, amen. Then you just let Allah die and resurrect again, and I'll follow him. But he hadn't done that. Jesus is the only one, uh, amen, that died uh, and resurrected again. Uh, amen. And all honor and glory goes through Jesus Christ uh, to get to our Father. There's no other way. Jesus said, I am the door. Who's the door? Jesus said, I am the door. Amen. And any other man tries to enter in any other way is the same is a thief and the robber. Brother Jimmy, you ought not to put down other religions. Now, I ought to just let them die and go to hell in ignorance, right? No, then shut up. Amen, I need to be telling them the truth. I need to get the light out there. Amen, don't get mad at me for turning the light bulb on in the closet. Amen, it's my job. Amen, to share the truth. Amen, and to point people in the right direction. Amen, you just don't let them walk into the fire. Amen, because you don't want them to disagree with you. Amen, my goodness, what's happened to the world today? Verse number three says, Therefore, with joy shall ye Draw water out of the wells of salvation. Isaiah knew he could draw water from the wells of salvation. Uh, amen. With joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. With joy, we can draw water from the wells of salvation. What does that mean? We can come to him that are broken, that are oppressed, that are down, that are out. That looks like our world is all messed up. Now, my wife's got this favorite word. It's called yucky. And anything that's dirty, it's yucky. Or anything she don't like is yucky. You probably won't find that in a dictionary unless she was to write one. She's the only one I ever heard use that word, but everything, amen, that she don't like is yucky. That's what I say about green peas. They're yucky. Amen. But see, your life can seem like it's yucky. I can't find one good thing about me. I can't find one good thing that's good about me. Let me just brace yourself and let me tell you two things right now today that's good about you. Number one, you're alive. And number two, you're not in hell screaming to the top of your lungs for an eternity. That's two blessings uh, that you got right there. Amen. It don't matter what it is. Uh, amen. That's going on in your life. You ought to just jump up and praise God that you're not in hell today. And you ought to jump up and praise God that you're alive. The funeral homes are full today of people that are not. The cemeteries, uh, amen, are running over, amen, with people that are not alive. Amen. We've got two things on our side. And now then, the third thing that's on our side is, uh, amen, the Lord said, Whomsoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Wow, we got enough right there to shout. You're alive, you're not in hell, and there's a doorway to heaven with joy. We can draw water from the wells of salvation. We've got an opportunity to make it to heaven if you want to. Well, Brother Jimmy, I don't really care where I make it to heaven or not. You will. And it won't be 10 seconds after you draw your last breath. You'd have wished to goodness, amen, that you'd have turned everything that you know around, amen, and sought after the face of God. Amen. I want to tell you something, folks. Heaven's a beautiful place. I sure don't want to miss it. Amen. But one thing that makes heaven twice as pretty and twice as sweet is to take a glimpse through faith and what I can read in the Word of God of a place that's called hell, and it really makes me appreciate heaven. I thank God for the streets of gold. I thank God for the walls of Jasper. I thank God for the gates of pearl. I thank God for Jesus being the light and there's no sun going to be up there. I'm thankful that we'll be able to see the Father as he exposes himself fully in front of us. 
Woo, what a time we're going to have. Amen, but it's going to make it twice as pretty. If, there was, if it was a briar patch, amen, and nothing but thistles, uh, amen, and snakes when I made it to heaven, it'd still be like heaven compared to what hell's going to be like. Amen. Well, Brother Jimmy, it'd be awful to live in a place uh, that was full of thistles and briars and snakes. Uh, I'll take it over hell any day. Guarantee you. Amen. You just don't understand. Uh, amen. What's waiting those people. Uh, amen. When they cast into the place. Uh, amen. Called hell. Well, Brother Jimmy, I don't hear nobody preaching about that anymore. That's the reason why people are shacking up, living like a devil. Amen. They're carrying on like a bunch of dogs in heat with no remorse. Uh, amen. No fear of God. Uh, amen. It's simply because they don't hear hell preached on. Amen. We need to preach heaven so sweet that the honey runs out of both corners of our mouth and hell so hot you can feel the heat all the way to the back door of the church. Amen, because that's all that's going to matter. When all of life is over, it's whether or not you made it to heaven. I'm going to guarantee you, folks, uh, it don't matter how bad your life is, how bad you're hooked on drugs, uh, it ain't nothing like what hell's going to be. You're having a party in your misery compared to what that's going to be like. So we need to be facing, uh, amen, Jesus, uh, and not facing judgment without him, or facing judgment, uh, amen, knowing, uh, amen, to do the right thing, and we refuse to do it uh, simply because that we didn't want to. Brother Jimmy, I don't know if I can get off him drugs or not. I know you can. Well, I don't know if I can get off alcohol or not. I know you can. I don't know if I can get uh, cut loose from these cigarettes or not. I, I, I know you can. Amen. I don't know if I can quit uh, drinking and lying. I, yes, you can. I know you can. Amen. Through the help of the Lord, if you want to, you can do it. Or Brother Jimmy, I don't know where he'll ever marry me or not. Then you need to run from him as fast as you can. Don't let him turn you into something. Now. Amen. That's a dirty word. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. If she won't marry you, kick her out. Amen. It ain't she ain't worth going to hell over. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Boy, what a message I'm preaching today. I love my wife better than I love myself. Amen. But I'm telling you one thing. I'm not going to hell for her. Amen. No matter how much I love her, I'm glad she's a Christian and she's ready to go. But if she wasn't, she's not going to drag me into hell. I can tell you that right now. I've never seen a woman, Raquel Welch or anybody else that was ever on TV or that movie number 10. Amen. That it was worth going to hell over. Woo, praise the Lord. I'm going to get wound up and preach for days over it. I feel it coming on. Ah, amen, but I know I can draw water from the wells of salvation through joy. It's a happy thing to come and confess to the Lord. It's a happy thing to give your life to the Lord. Can I, I feel like I need to share this story. Several years ago, there was a boy and a girl coming to church here, and they were living together, and they know I didn't approve of it, and I preached on it just about every week like I do right now. Amen, just about every week. They continued doing what they was going to do, you know. But they finally decided they was going to get married. And they, and they said, well, Brother Jimmy, we're going to get married. Give our heart to the Lord, and we're going to get married. I said, that'd be good. So will you do the wedding ceremony? I said, well, sure I will. Be glad to. It'd be an honor. Okay, we set it for uh, the following Saturday. We had a revival. Amen. They went come in on Sunday night. And I'll tell you, the power of God hit this place. It was out of this world. Uh, amen. Both of them plowed right into the altar right there. They said, uh, they give their heart to the Lord. And they said, we can't go back home and live together. It'd be right. Wrong. I said, that's right. He said, will you marry us? I said, you got your license? They said, I got them at the house. I said, all right, then. I said, we got witnesses here. You go home, get your license, and bring them back. Uh, amen. I'm going to go ahead and do the ceremony, and you borrow you a couple of rings. So they borrowed them some rings. Uh, I married them. Uh, they went back home. They met the next day with two witnesses that was here, and, the, and, and the, they filled out the papers, and I took them back to the courthouse. Amen. I, Brother Jimmy, that wasn't probably according to procedure. No, but going to hell ain't according to procedure either. And they went back home. They would had to went to the altar and got right with God again. What if they had a car wreck on the way home? Amen. And, and going right back in the bed of whoredom. Amen. <laughs> I know this kind of preaching is not very popular, but I had a lady call me a few years ago and said, Thank God, Brother Jimmy, you preached all over that and said God got a hold of me. I went home, told my boyfriend, pack his bags. It's time for him to leave. I'm going to get, I've got right with God. I, I went to the local church and I got saved. Amen. I told him I wanted him gone. Amen. He's going to marry me or he's going to be gone. One or the other when I get back home. Amen. She said, he's gone now. And she went to cry and she said, I feel good. I said, yeah. The Lord just ridded you of a rat. 
Amen. With joy, I can draw water from the wells of salvation. Amen. We don't need somebody that's going to use us like a mop. Amen. And then throw the thing away. You're not disposable. You're honorable in the sight of God if you'll give your heart to him. Amen. You're something precious. The Lord spent a lot of time breathing the gift of life into your nostrils and allowed you to become a living soul. Amen. He made a place for you if you'll give your heart for him to him amen in heaven uh, he's prepared his son uh, he allowed him to die on the cross to set you free from your sins don't you allow amen some uh, two-faced lying hypocritical devil to drag you into hell I'm talking about Satan now is who I'm talking about amen I'm not talking about your boyfriend or your girlfriend they're not the devil they're just living for him <laughs> Lord help me Amen. Verse 4 says, And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. That means child of the Most High God. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Praise the Lord, all of us that are in Zion. Great is the Holy One of Israel. Who is the Holy One of Israel? Jesus, amen, the Holy One of Israel. Amen, the Son of Jehovah. Amen. Let's praise him. We need to be dancing with joy. We need to be praising the Lord that we are more than conquerors through him, that we are overcomers by how? Amen. By the word of God, by the blood of Jesus, and by the word of our testimony. Amen. That's how that we are overcomers. Amen. Through the blood of the Lamb. I'm thankful today. Amen. That we're able to overcome. I got a little more scripture going to read fast. Isaiah 43, 14 says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Don't look at yesterday. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in America. Excuse me, the desert. Rivers in a hard place. Well, Brother Jimmy, America's not a wilderness. We've, we're the most financially blessed place that there is in the world. But we're the most spiritual desert place I've seen in a long time. Amen. The world has lost its mind and the churches have dried up and become dead and cold and complacent. Amen. Problems everywhere. Amen. We're in the desert. But you know what? Amen. He will even make a way in the desert. He'll make a way for the church in the midst of all the stuff that's going on. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. What people? The children of God, the born-again believers. Uh, amen. We shall be dancing in the streets and singing unto the Lord. How many ever saw the little cartoon, The Grinch, The Show Christmas? Amen. Pretty good little cartoon. It's got good moral to that. How that riches and things of that nature that the Grinch decided he was going to steal Christmas from everybody. But you know, at the end of the story, this is what they found out. He got to hearing all the people down in the valley, in the little cottages and little homes, they all came out and got out in the street and they held hands with one another and they started singing because Christmas had came. They didn't have a present anywhere in the town. There wasn't a gift for anybody to enjoy. No wrapping paper to be torn. Amen. There wasn't any gingerbread boys to eat or cookies. All of the things like that was taken away. He had stolen everything. But the real meaning of Christmas was loving one another and worshiping God, and he could not take it away. The devil today is trying to take the real meaning of Christmas away, but he can't do it. The devil wants to take the joy away from the church, amen, by sending ISIS and terrorists, amen, and, and, and all this stuff where people's lost their mind, amen, and they can't discern between right and wrong and good and evil anymore, just like it had been prophesied in the Word of God. It's going to 
going to happen in the last days. They're going to call good evil and evil good. That day's already here. And it's caused a lot of the church, amen, to go through a time of oppression, amen. But the people that really love the Lord, that really came to worship him, we're going to sing when the roll is called up yonder. It don't matter what happens out there. We're going to hold hands and join together, and we're going to shout the victory that we have in Jesus Christ, amen, because we're alive, we've been saved from hell, and we're on our way to a better place. Amen, a place of a land of joy and peace and happiness. A, a lot to be thankful for. And we need to put behind us yesterday. We need to put behind us the things of old. We need to put behind us those things that's not right. And let's press forward uh, in the things that God's gave us. Uh, and if you don't have anything from the Lord, let's come get it today. Get your life started. Put behind you the sin you commended before you come into this place this morning and straighten out the things uh, Amen, that you have done that is wrong by doing the right thing. Amen. There's many that are being misled, led astray, and the devil's got a lot of people by a ring in their nose, and he's got the, the rope pulling it. You can take a great big 1,500-pound bull, handle him sometimes if you got the ring in his nose and a rope on it. Amen, you might think you're big. You might think you know something. But there's a devil today. If you just allow him to put that ring in your nose, he'll lead you where he wants you to go. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud. Can I say this about the proud? Who's the proud? The proud is anybody, amen, that rejects the word of God and continues to live in sin when they know better. Amen. That's a proudful Look in a proud for heart, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the, that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So whatever it is that you're going through, understand and know that everybody else is going through the things that you're going through. I'm going to finish up now. This is what I want to say as they're getting us a song to play for an invitation this morning. Listen, I'm going to tell you something, folks. If you're in a spot right now where you've got sin in your life and, and, and you've throwed your life away or you're in a spot right now as a Christian and you're overwhelmed, amen, because of the things that's around you, disappointments, discouragement, and things behind. are not like they ought to be and so on. I'm going to give you a chance to come. Give you a chance. I'm going to pull the, the volume behind. down about four notches. Give you a Leave chance to come this morning just like you are. Not to shut it off, just pull it down. Uh, give you a chance to come this morning, just need. like you are, and surrender this to the Lord. Peter said, cast it, your care upon you, him, for he careth for you. But you Bring that thing to Jesus working. this morning. Would you stand with me, please? All right, I hope you enjoyed the program uh, today. Hope that it was a blessing to you. Um, we are dependent on contributions from people like you that watches the program, that likes the program, to send money in to keep this on the air. Um, those that um, are led of the Lord to give, I'm going to tell you a, a couple of ways that you can send money in. The first way is you can send your check or money order uh, to Jimmy Wilson Ministries, Post Office Box 1346, Glasgow, Kentucky, and that's uh, 42142. Again, that's Jimmy Wilson Ministries, one post office box 1346, Glasgow, G-L-A-S-G-O-W, Kentucky, 42142. Or you can log on to our church's website at www.theshepherdshouse.net. And you can click on the Donate button, and it'll run it through PayPal, which is one of the most trusted services uh, that, that we have in America, and uh, I think everything will be fine. And Or you can, uh, if you don't have Internet, you can give us a call, and we'll be, someone will be on the phone, and uh, we'll have the capability of running that, your debit card or credit card, uh, through uh, that way if we need to. And uh, here's some things that I wanted to share with you out of the Word of God. We need to take our, 
our tithes into the storehouse, which is our home church, and then your offerings can go to other ministries. And Luke chapter 6, verse 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Men shall give into your bosom, for with the same measure that you met, with all it shall be measured to you again. Malachi 3, verse 10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall destroy the fruits of he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. If you believe in this ministry, then um, we're going to pray that you will help support this ministry. And I've had several this sent in um, one-time offerings, and that's good. We appreciate that. But in order uh, to really keep the ministry going, we really need to have a continuous um, uh, coming in of, of what we can get each month. And I appreciate the ones. We have a few that does give uh, the same thing and sometimes even extra than what they normally give each month. And that uh, helps carry the load so we're able to do what we're doing. Right now, we're on uh, TV in Scottsville, Kentucky, which goes into southern Kentucky and northern Tennessee areas. And then we're on in Chicago, MCTV, which goes into um, the Chicago, Illinois area, into Indiana, into Michigan, and Wisconsin. So uh, we praise the Lord in parts of those states. We praise the Lord for that. Now we're also on HLE Radio uh, that uh, is on uh, twice per week. And uh, that goes out to several people there that way. In fact, it goes into 139 countries there. So, and then we've got our church's website. We've got archives uh, there where we've got several of the sermons over the last few uh, several weeks that's posted there. And you can view that and, and watch some of the sermons there at any time at your leisure. So we're getting out the best we can, as fast as we can, trying to reach as many people as we can. And uh, we need your support to help us reach those people, you pray about it and be led of the Lord. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm not going to make you promises that you're going to get rich or your boyfriend or girlfriend is going to come back and make up with you. I'm not making you promises like that. But I will tell you, if you'll sow seed in this ministry, the Lord will bless you. And if you'll help me reach the multitudes, if we don't reach for one soul and keep them out of hell, it'll be worth every bit of the effort and all the money that we all could give. God bless you. Pray about giving. Be led of the Holy Spirit. Support your home church first. God bless you. For a moment, put yourself in Mary's position. Could you imagine being Mary, knowing that you're carrying Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mary, did you know your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters. Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know sight to a blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hands? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels try? And when you kiss your little baby, You've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the devil will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dead. 
Savior's precious blood covered it all. Try to imagine how this miracle took place. Love beyond all measure, our God's amazing grace. Amen. Sometimes when we're weary, we might stumble and we might fall. But just one drop of his precious blood covered. 